Uh, Chris, as you know, I kind of like to start these at about five after. So maybe if you want to tell everybody who you are, Shane's messaging me right now. So I want to make sure all the audio. So again, guys, bear with us. We should be fine, but we had to switch our whole system. And when there's 8,000 people that you have to try to figure out links and systems for, it can be very confusing. So uh, Chris, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about who you are whenever I go try to make sure everything's okay. I'll be right back. Yeah. First thing real quick, uh, make me co-host. Okay, hold on. Can I do that? Yep, you got to click my name. There should be a couple buttons. Okay, please hold. Me host. So then now you're the host and then I'm not? No, we host together. Uh, host disabled participant screen sharing. So I'm going to need gonna need to be able to do that whatever i'll just put you what if okay i'll just maybe let you share your screen see if that works hold on okay try that see if you can share your screen now if not i'll switch i can it. do it now yep i'm good okay all right as we're learning okay <laughs> i'll be back sounds good <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Hopefully everybody can see that just fine now. Um, so I'm Chris Rains. I uh, run a team out of Tennessee. Um, we cover the majority of the state now. Um, been an agent a little over three years. And uh, whenever I was first starting out, I pretty much refused to uh, spend money on building this. Uh, I started out part time and transitioned to full time rather quickly, uh, about a year or so, and uh, kept growing and growing. And it's kind of uh, been been a journey, but uh, it closed a lot of transactions now and uh, built my business all without spending a ton of money on leads and uh, trying to constantly battle some of the, the big dogs that had a lot more money than I did. So I kept looking for looking for ways to connect with more people and figure things out that uh, did not require all those, uh, all those resources. It's, uh, you can build this business two ways, uh, time and money. I chose time and uh, relationships. <clears throat> so um, I'm gonna scroll down here. A um, little bit about me. I was a licensed physical therapist assistant for 11 years prior to uh, uh, swapping to full-time real estate. Um, had really no prior marketing or sales experience. Uh, I've made zero cold calls still to this day. Uh, I had no budget for ad spend. Really, I just refused to spend the money. It's not that I didn't have it. I just uh, didn't didn't want to have it. Uh, and crushing it three years later, um, pretty early on in the my career, even before I even uh, was selling very many homes, I was so active on social media that I was uh, ranked number seven in Rutherford County, and number 58 in the state of Tennessee for my social media presence. Uh, just because I was putting so much content out there. Um, I've organically grown uh, multiple groups on Facebook to over 300,000 members. This slide is old. I think I'm at like 600,000 members now across multiple states. Um, currently, I use my groups to leverage uh, for my uh, non-traditional team um, to leverage them to, to get leads. Uh, I think I'm currently in about 15 states. Um, and I provide a lot of leads to my to my team, uh, both traditional team and non-traditional team. Um, closed transactions have nearly doubled on average every six months uh, with 45 homes sold in 2021. Um, I think I'm trending somewhere along those lines already this year. Um, so it's, business has been good. Uh, definitely love growing it organically. And uh, you know, I, I also love helping other agents and utilizing my skill set to do so um, and keep them from spending a lot of money and, and really, in my opinion, wasting it a lot of times on those high priced, high ticket leads from the names that I won't mention. Um, Brad, I know you're not, I don't know if you're back yet. Do you want me to keep going? I'm here. Yeah, you can. It's five after. We can, we can start diving into it. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Perfect. So, that's a little bit about me. Uh, I'm going to get into it. I, I named this course Connecting with Strangers 
because uh, every every deal that I've ever done has pretty much involved me having to connect with them at some at some level. So whether that's connecting with them personally, connecting them with the resources that they needed to get the job done, connecting them with uh, an avenue out of whatever situation that they're in, you know, if they need to sell their home for a particular reason, I need to connect all the dots. So that's kind of my thought process behind that. But my, my true root of my business, I want to connect with them as a person. That's, that's my biggest goal is to actually build a relationship with them. Um, so to connect, what does that even mean? It's not just talking to people. It means to associate, to unite, to actually join. Um, connecting to me is very similar to dating. Um, you got to get to know people. You kind of start out a little bit. You ask, ask some questions, get to know them. And then you start to dive a little deeper as, as time goes. Um, you've, no, you've shown no value until referral or support is given. So if you're trying to build a relationship with somebody, the best way to do so is to, is to bring them value, to be a value add, whether that's to their business, to their life, whatever that is. Um, and one thing I've noticed is that connecting becomes more difficult with age, but, but why is that? So our lives are increasingly more complex as we get older. Um, gone are the early days of light up sneakers and you're running up to the kid at the playground saying, hey man, cool shoes, do those make you run fast? And then all of a sudden you're best friends. Like it doesn't just happen like that anymore. You know, like it, it's so easy to watch kids play. And I honestly, I feel like you can learn a lot from watching kids play and make friends and, and how easy it is for them because they, they don't really care. They're not, they're not afraid of getting shot down. They're not afraid of getting turned down. And th some of them are, but on average, a lot of kids that they just naturally make new friends. It's, it's pretty incredible. So, uh, you know, if you're watching your kids play, I think you can, uh, you can learn a lot from that. Um, humans still crave interaction, but it's not always evident. So there's a lot of people that, that they really want you to be their friend, but they're not just going to come out and say it, but a lot of people are just lonely. So people are friendly, but lonely. We have anywhere between two and three close friends on average. So these are, this is uh, US data um, that, I, that I've pulled. Uh, the interactions between people have, uh, that have with their neighbors, which happen either weekly or daily are usually friendly, but they're, they mostly consist of a brief greeting. So you'll be out checking the mail, you wave at your neighbor, and then you go back inside. And that, that's really all, all there is to it. Um, one is, in four has managed to become friends with one or two of their neighbors. Um, celebrations are what brings most people together, uh, especially neighbors. And one in four say they eat dinner together, have birthdays or holidays together, and gather for events. So for me, I look at different ways to initiate uh, those, those com conversations and interactions. You know, even with the open house that I just did, um, I invited, I had a mimosa bar, and I invited my entire neighborhood over to stop by. And was pretty much like, hey, would love to, to meet you if I haven't met you yet. And I would love to see you again uh, if, we, if, we've, if it's been a while since we last connected. Love for you to stop by. For me, that's a great way of getting in front of that audience. Really cost me like 30 bucks for some mimosa stuff. Really wasn't a big deal. But I, I just want them to know that I'm here. I want them to know that I'm that resource. And I want, to, want them to like come and actually connect and chat. And I did have several neighbors stop by. And, you know, some of them would stop and chat for 20, 30 minutes even. And to me, that's huge because those are not only just my neighbors, they're my referral sources. Like it's, it's a great way to build and just constantly put myself out there in front of them. So a few questions and thoughts. Hey, that Chris, I before you go on, sorry, yeah. just so everybody knows, uh, again, this is our first time. So for those of you that have been here. I just want to quickly say, hey, I'm kind of trying to figure out stuff in the background. My name is Brad Vandewal. I used to run the number one team at the number one REMAX office in the world. Now we have a, a coaching program for real estate agents every Tuesday. Chris is one of our coaches. Um, normally have an invite a friend and a few different things, but we'll, we'll have that going. For some reason, the chat function is disabled. I don't know how to re-enable it. Uh, Shane's actually driving right now, so we'll hopefully we have it fixed for next time. I think if you have questions or if you have comments, I think you can put it in the Q&A. 
So if you guys have anything, I know we normally use the chat function. If you can use the Q&A function, and I'll be sitting here answering questions or Chris can answer from there. So I uh, just wanted to give that that heads up, Chris. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, no problem. So uh, a few different questions and thoughts that I've heard uh, from a lot of agents. And I, I talk to a lot of agents regularly. Uh, they're new to real estate, no closed deals. Uh, they're newer to a particular area. They have no sphere. They're starting over. So now what? Um, I'm introverted and quirky. I love introverted and quirky people, honestly. Um, I, I think there's a lot of people out there that are going to resonate with your quirkiness. So I tend to tell people to lean into the, lean into the quirky. Um, I'm goofy. I like to have fun. Um, and you guys will kind of see that a little bit. I'll, I'll get more into that later. But uh, there, people resonate with that. They don't love people that are just boring and plain and numbers and all that stuff. A lot of them just want a good personality. They want to spend time with an agent that they actually want to deal with, that somebody they want to work with. So I put myself out there. Uh, does it turn some people off? Probably, but it, you know, I get more business than uh, more business than not. So uh, a few people tell me that they have no hobbies. So what do you recommend? And then other people say, I don't know where to meet people. So we're going to answer a lot of these questions as we go through. Um, first off, we're going to start with some of the basic stuff, uh, business networking. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, why? Uh, it's to develop relationships with people and companies that you may do business with in the future. So usually whenever you're going to some type of networking event, um, I do recommend the ones that are not the pay to play per se. Um, I think those are that's a pretty lousy way to, to build your business is to have to pay to network with other people. doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. There are plenty of networking functions that are at no cost. And uh, you, you're not having to give people business just because they're the other ones paying on the other side, because those aren't always the, the best in the business that are having to pay to do so. Um, not trying to knock everybody, but that's been my personal experience. Um, with that, uh, I did, I've gone to several Connect Nash Nashville business networking events. Um, I get a lot of benefit from, from those, met a lot of different people, built a lot of great relationships. Um, the, there's things that are not always obvious, though, about business networking. Um, and that is that they're looking for the exact same thing as you. And it's not always comfortable, though. So if you're not comfortable early on, you want to try to find a connector. And that's one of the things that I did in the, the Nashville area that got me connected in with some of these is I found that person that liked going to the events that always seemed to know where the events were. And then whenever I was there, I wasn't always by myself. So I, I would get introduced to multiple people, all because of that, those one or two guys that already knew everybody. So if you can find that connector, build that relationship with that one person, they'll start opening doors for other people, which is pretty cool. So it's not all, doesn't all have to be on your, on your own time and your own uh, merit there. You can, you can definitely rely on others to help you. So um, group settings should lead to a one-on-one -on -one, and you want to target your ideal partners. So you don't want to take on a one-on-one -on -one with literally everybody and anybody that doesn't always make sense. I, I target specific people that I'm looking for to scale and, I, I be honest, I look them up on social media. I try to find their like what they're actively doing. If they're not like putting themselves out there, that kind of stuff, they may not be the right partner for me. I want the people that are looking to, uh, to grow and kill it and that we can help each other. Um, I'm a big fan of non-coffee meetups. So do I do, still do coffee meetups? Yeah, I do just because it's basic and easy. But the coffee meetup is not always king. Um, you got to find out what's important to that other person and potentially break the norm. Um, one of the one of my best uh, networking first initial meetups, uh, I actually went fishing uh, with an, with a guy. So we actually went catfishing. For me, that was great. I like to fish. He likes to fish. Uh, we built a much better relationship because we weren't sitting at a coffee shop, sip like throwing coffee back that neither one of us really cared anything about. We were actively doing something that we wanted to do. And we've stayed friends because of that. Um, so I, I encourage you to find out what's important to the other person that you're trying to connect with. If they like to golf or whatever it is, find that, that thing that they're going to resonate with and, and do that. Um, be specific with your goals and ask. It, 
it's astonishing to me the number of agents that I've set in on some of these meetings with. And they're like, yep, anybody that's buy looking to buy or sell, send them my way. Okay, welcome to every agent under the sun that is looking for a buyer or seller, all of them. So I always say, be very specific. If you have a buyer that you're working with, say, hey, look, I've got a buyer looking in this specific area at this specific price point. Do any of you know someone that potentially meets that criteria that might be looking to sell their house? When you get specific with things, they obviously already know you want buyers and sellers, but when you're specific, it's going to resonate. They're going to think about it in conversation. They'll be like, oh yeah, Chris has somebody that's looking for a half million dollar house in that neighborhood. How about that? And then all of a sudden your phone starts ringing saying, hey, look, I actually do have a friend that has that. But if it's just anybody looking to buy or sell, then they think that you're just a baby bird chirping with your mouth open, just waiting for somebody to feed you. That's, that's my outlook on that. So be specific, have an actual need, have an actual goal, and then be willing to help others get there as well. So which business professionals should I connect with? Um, lenders are obvious, insurance agents. Um, I do get business from my insurance agents. You, you build a relationship with insurance guys. They do know people and they have friends and whatever else that, that are looking to sell their homes. Title companies, same thing. You can build relationships with your title companies. Um, lawyers, divorce attorneys, all that kind of stuff. Uh, they definitely have business. I, when I look at a divorce attorney, when they send me a lead, then all of a sudden I've got three deals potential because when somebody is splitting up, they might be buying on both sides. If I can land all of it, you're talking about three deals. Um, financial advisors, people are starting to build up their credit, all that kind of stuff. And they're getting prepared to where they are going to be ready to buy a house. If you can find those guys, there's a lot of different stuff. Um, marketers, any type of marketer, um, they get it. They get the marketing aspect of real estate. They're marketing something else, but they understand where you're coming from. If you can connect with the marketer of a different industry and be able to refer business back and forth that doesn't conflict, then you're putting yourself in a great situation. Um, your photographers, videographers, you want to make sure that you have multiple people in your pipe. Your, your one guy that does your photos all the time is not always going to be available. Same thing for video guys. The people get busy. Um, I have multiple different uh, vendors in that uh, regime up my sleeve. That way at any point in time, if I've got a, a deal that needs to be listed tomorrow, I know that I've got somebody that I can call that can squeeze something in. Um, general contractors, home repair specialists, uh, the home repair specialist is great. So there's some different programs out there like Curbio um, that will actually fix up your seller's house and get paid back at closing. So there's different ways that you can build your business and use those, those tools in your tool belt to get more business. Because when you walk in and you have a plan that is better than the other agents that walk in and say, hey, well, this house needs a lot of work so we can only list it for this much instead of giving them a plan otherwise, uh, all of a sudden, you you know, I've got a deal that goes active today. I'm listing $45,000 higher for five grand worth of work that a, that a contractor did. So I actually fronted that money myself and I'll get paid back at closing. But there's different companies out there that if you don't have those funds, you can do that. But I landed the listing no problem at a uh, higher than average commission rate. So um, job recruiters, those, those guys, they know people that are coming into town Right. So a job recruiter, when they're recruiting from out of state, somebody's moving here, then all of a sudden you have that that open line of uh, connecting with them, get them on the front end when they're ready to buy um, florist, catering, bakeries, all that stuff. A lot of people know when different things are happening and you, you might question, like, how is my caterer going to help me? How's my baker going to help me? Well, if you have a bakery that you get cookies from regularly and they know that somebody's having a baby. And they go in there and they have bought the cookies for the baby shower or whatever else. And then they are uh, going to need to possibly be upsizing. They might live in a house that's too small. Now that they're having a kid, they need to go up again. So if you actually structure every different relationship, you can tell your, your, the people that are on the other side exactly what you want from them, exactly how to build that and, and help you. And then all of a sudden you're going in and you're buying cookies or doing whatever else and supporting their business while also growing yours.
Um, I love Facebook groups. That's one thing that if anybody gets to know me, I am very, very active on Facebook groups. I have done hundreds of thousands of dollars in sales uh, from, real, from Facebook groups. Um, regionally specific groups are phenomenal. If you're trying to grow in your area, um, hip town. So we've got like hip Nashville. Uh, there's a hip Murfreesboro. There's multiple hip cities um, out there that, that have groups. And you got to look for different things. Uh, what's happening in Nashville, 20s and 30s meetup groups. Um, if you're not in your 20s or 30s, there are other groups, but uh, I've done a lot of business from my 20s and 30s meetup group. There's people that are moving here usually that don't have a lot of friends, whatever else. If you're a friendly guy like me, you like meeting people, uh, I, I meet them naturally. I'll go to some of the meetups here and there and uh, we'll grab dinner, whatever it is. I enjoy it and it, it builds a business and puts my name out there. Um, you can do book clubs, car meetups, fitness, yoga. Uh, and then for those that like to drink, bourbon, beer, and wine tasting. Um, there are bourbon, beer, and wine groups and they'll do get togethers. I've seen them go to Top Golf. I've seen them do all kinds of different events uh, where you can go meet with other uh, bourbon connoisseurs. So if, if that's something that you're interested in, you just have to figure out ways to constantly meet new people and get in front of people. Preferably doing something that you love. So um, neighborhood Facebook pages are great. You want to help manage the group if possible. Um, I, I like to come from a concept of always uh, giving and helping others. So if somebody needs something, I'll buy their kids coupon books. I loan out tools, ladders. Uh, saws, like if somebody needs something, you better believe I, I'm one of the first people to say, yep, you can borrow whatever it is that you need. I don't mind at all. I've I mean, my lawnmower, uh, cooking items when they request it, whatever it is, if they need boxes, something like my wife orders from Amazon constantly, I keep a stack of boxes in the garage. Um, it's, it's pretty ridiculous, the number of boxes that we end up with. But uh, you'd be surprised just being willing to help out other people all the time. It puts you in front of them. So I make sure to add them as a friend on Facebook too. Um, so every interaction creates a new relationship and always add them on Facebook uh, as a friend. So you don't just want to invite them to your business page. You want to invite them as a friend. Facebook really doesn't push your business page very much, but uh, if you can get them on your feed and start pushing stuff, content out, they see you as a person, then they also see your, your business side of things. So you always want to make sure that you're connected on there. Um, host a weekly or bi-monthly event. This should be something that you enjoy doing, not a headache. Uh, and I stress that, not a headache. Um, for me, it's poker night. I've been hosting for over five years now, every week. Um, your friends will invite their friends and so forth. I've built multiple strong relationships. I've done over 100K in GCI just in the last 12 months alone. And I plan a poker guys trip one to two times a year now. So literally me and all my poker buddies will go down to the beach. We've gone to New Orleans. Um, I'm gonna, I'll, we've gone uh, deep sea fishing. We've done a lot of different stuff. And a lot of these guys I would have never met if we weren't playing poker together regularly. Um, whenever I started, uh, this was literally one of my first posts that said, looking for neighborhood guys to add to our Wednesday poker night game, occasional weekend games. Um, it's at my house, low stakes. We always have food on Wednesdays. Bring your own beer and get to know some of your neighbors. Been playing for over a year now. We nearly always have a table of six to eight guys on Wednesdays, but can always use extra players. Um, and I've posted multiple times over the last few years. Um, any guys in the neighborhood want to play poker, et cetera. Um, I follow up. And uh, we'll, we'll keep inviting them, even if they only come once or twice, uh, because there's going to be people that don't show up regularly. But even if they only come once or twice, I will uh, still get to know them just enough to where I'm that name. They, they know who I am. So, you know, if they don't want to come or keep coming regularly, that's OK. Um, I do the poker invites also on a uh, group me app. So once I get them in, they, they see that weekly invite on group me and the, it's just a poker group chat. Uh, and it keeps their text from going off constantly because you can silence that app. Um, another great thing uh, is picking a social sport. So uh, kickball, softball, volleyball, dodgeball, soccer, list goes on. Um, for me, I play kickball. Uh, you can start or join a team. You can look on Facebook groups, the 20s and 30s meetup group. That is the team that I, I play on now. A uh, team was uh, started, started from that group. Uh, if you've got no friends that play, even better. 
So it, for, for me, if you're looking to meet new people, you are a lot less likely to meet new people if you're joining a group that your friends are already on. So uh, if you're meeting a bunch of new people, you're, what happens when you have a ton of friends that are already on the team? You probably spend more time on average talking to the people you already know instead of getting to know the rest of the team and everybody else. So if you're truly wanting to leverage this to grow your business, you have to literally talk to as many people as possible and get to know them. The key to that success is post game. Um, so you can talk to people during the game, but if you really want to want to be successful at this at this strategy, you got to go to the post game activities. So when everybody's going to the league bar afterwards and grabbing food and drinks, you better be joining. And the things to do there is to be interested and ask questions to genu genuinely get to know your team. You never want to just come out and say, "Hey, I'm an agent," because they don't care. But if you ask them enough questions and you stir the conversation, eventually what's going to happen, if you ask them enough questions, they're going to be forced to ask you questions. Otherwise, the conversation would be awkward if they didn't start having a conversation back to you and start asking some questions. Never had anybody not ask me at least a couple of questions about myself once I started diving in and showing genuine interest in them. So never introduce yourself as Joe the realtor. It sounds like a sales pitch. I introduce myself as Chris. That's it. Um, every now and then my friends will introduce me as my realtor buddy, Chris, which is what I actually go by uh, Instagram. It's at my realtor buddy, Chris. Same thing on TikTok. Um, because what I found was I started getting introduced as that uh, by some of them. So I figured I would just go ahead and lean into it and uh, go by my realtor buddy, Chris. Um, we've won a few different championships and done a few different things. Had a lot of fun along the way. Uh, I do love the kickball because it is beer league. So sometimes we even have to play games where you have to uh, you have to hold the uh, cup the entire time you're you're playing. Um, a lot of it's a lot of fun. Um, doesn't have to be miserable while you're growing this business. So that's the the main thing I I want you guys to take away is this business doesn't have to be miserable. Um, here's one of the leads that uh, I'd only talked to a couple times. I didn't have his phone number. You can see it here. It says, hey, David, this is from Stan and Stuff Kickball. Uh, we are thinking of selling our house. I said, sweet deal. I really appreciate you reaching out. How can I help, brother? I said, well, congrats on the baby, first of all. Secondly, going to need an agent and some advice. I said, thanks. We, uh, we took pics this week at the beach, so should be able to formally announce it soon because I hadn't, we hadn't quite had the baby yet. We were just uh, starting to let everyone know. I said, I'm still in Florida until Sunday, actually, at a dueling piano bar at the moment. Can I touch base tomorrow morning? And what's the address? So I did a couple things here. I let him know, A, I'm on vacation, still answering my phone. B, I am busy. I'm at a dueling piano bar, literally could be doing anything else other than taking care of you and asked him if I could touch base tomorrow morning. So I started letting him know, A, I'm available, but B, I'm still setting my own boundaries. And his response lets me know that he's gonna be a great client. So enjoy your downtime. We can talk when you get back. He wants me to enjoy my vacation. That alone says that I'm going to enjoy working with him as a person, right? I could take a lot from that text. That's what I read though, and how I look into it. So I not only helped sell his house, but I also referred him out to uh, Indiana and got paid on a referral there. So I've done multiple deals this year as well for other kickball players. Um, it's nice uh, when it's a 20s and 30s meetup group. Most of those people are either in their first starter home or buying their first home. So I'm able to be their possible first and only agent as they start to move down the line. And then I have business for years to come and referrals. And those people that are on a 20s and 30s meetup group are constantly meeting new people as well because they're actively engaged in that group. So I don't even have to go to all the events, but I can get referrals from them as you build relationships with those people. Another good one, uh, the dog park. Um, so I'm a huge dog lover. I've got two border collies, Shadow and Saber. Uh, they are my buddies. Uh, love spending time with them. Love taking them to the dog park and hiking and everything else. But also while they're playing, dog, dad doesn't always exist while he's at the dog park. So I end up sitting uh, around with a lot of the other dog owners that also don't exist to their dogs while they're at the dog park playing with the other dogs. So I get an opportunity to talk to the other dog owners. Um, just from conversations with many of them, they often live in apartments and they don't have a yard for them to play in. So oftentimes I will add them on Facebook 
I'll give them a card uh, with my contact info. Sometimes I'll, I'll hit them up. I'll invite them to the dog park whenever I'm going. It doesn't have to be, uh, hey, are you looking to buy a house yet? It's a, hey, do you want to meet up and take the dogs to the dog park? I'm going anyways. I might as well use it to build my business at the same time. Um, I also will invite them to poker night or church or whatever else that I, whatever other function that I can invite them to and let them know that I care about them as a person. So it's, it's literally about connecting some way and providing value to their life. It doesn't have to be a straight up sales pitch. Volunteer groups. Um, one thing that I've noticed and I've done some research on, uh, women do volunteer at a higher rate than men across all age groups, educational levels, and other major de demographic characteristics. So all the data I've pulled, um, if you are a female and you are looking to connect with other females, whatever that situation is, um, if you think you're going to, if that's your target audience, then you want to look for ways to connect with that target audience. Um, running counter to what one might think, married people are more likely to volunteer than individuals who had never been married or those with another marital status. Um, a lot of times married people, for obvious reasons, are going to need a larger house at a higher price point. Um, Single people, they tend to buy smaller properties. They tend to buy townhomes and condos, that kind of stuff, just because they don't need a big house. So if you're trying to scale up on the price point, knowing that you're tar targeting a more likely to be married audience could be something that you can build your business upon a little bit, a, kind of a different mindset to, to think. I don't really care. I like working with everyone, but many people are trying to figure out ways to climb the ladder and get to a higher price point. So I'm just trying to open your mind a little bit to, to think about what that actually looks like and break down some of those numbers and metrics. Um, employed persons still tend to volunteer at a higher rate than those who are unemployed or not, not part of the labor force. That comes into play because we need people to have money if we're going to be selling them a house. If they're not employed, then it's probably gonna be pretty difficult to sell them a house. So the employed people, the ones that like working, oftentimes are actually more likely to take some time and volunteer. Um, there's a direct correlation found between education level and volunteerism rates. Almost 43% of college graduates reported volunteering. This demographic tended to direct its effort toward agencies with either a hobby, sport, or arts and cultural focus. So we've got more people that are volunteering. They have most often a job, they're most often educated. So we're looking at that demographic and thinking, all right, if I know the people that I want to connect with, and I know that they're probably going to be likely, more likely to have money, a job, all of that stuff. For me, that's the people that I want to gear towards and try to connect with. So retirement communities and nursing homes. This one's great as well. We actually have a, a course that circus, that circles around this. Uh, this is an entire 45 minute hour long course in itself. Um, but I came from the healthcare background. So I look at things a little bit different. So for me, I'm looking at how to actually connect with them when you go in. So I'm going to highlight a few different things that I know that they're looking for constantly. And they're looking for volunteers. They're looking for people to lead activities, to lead games, bingo, uh, and uh, all the other little games that the, the, the retirement communities play. There's a lot and they're constantly looking for activities. They also absolutely love musicians. If you are talented as a musician, which I am not, I wish I was, you don't even wanna be there when I'm singing karaoke, but, uh, and you probably won't see that unless I've had a couple drinks and uh, somehow get uh, liquid courage to do so, but uh, they love musicians and you don't even have to be the best in the world. But when you're somebody that's sitting in a retirement home all day, and you're kind of feeling like your life is just down in the dumps. Music is a, a good purging of the emotions for them. And to truly see their face light up and get to sing along and do all that stuff. It, it's pretty incredible to know that, you know, some people can come in and make that impact on them. Um, many facilities need items donated for prizes, bingo and other games. The prizes don't have to be anything crazy. Like, Literally, they will get excited over a box of tissues, hand sanitizer, little tiny stuffed animals, like little things that they need. 
Um, and it, it, it provides them those, those things and it's a prize. So they feel like they won something. Um, it, it's crazy how much uh, value that some of those, those, those people in those communities will put on that stuff. Um, you can refer to our full retirement community strategy and course by Steve.